blah, blah, not so horrible. <laughs> Deck the halls with blood, blood and, and skulls. Fa la 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 la. Did you know Art the Clown kills? Fa la 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 la. This, this is, is not, not a, a Christmas, Christmas podcast. <laughs> you know the hardest thing about that was you trying not to, knowing what I'm gonna yeah, say. I didn't know what words you were gonna say, so I was just trying to like <laughs> copy your homework, but like do it subtly you did, enough. You did pretty good. It's nice because that's a song that everybody knows. So I yeah, was like so able to just like match the tones of your voice. Yes. It's like when you're in a community theater production of the Christmas Carol, oh, I mean, and you, everyone you would never know what that's like. Oh, shut up! And everyone's like standing around singing songs, but you got those like ten kids who never. Never learned the lyrics, no. so they're like jingle bells. Jing, jing, jingle, oh, jingle, jingle bells twice. Jingle, jingle bells. <laughs> oh, one more jingle, jingle bells. All, all the, all the way. Oh, it's like, oh, it's, it's and it's fun. always like a fraction of a second after. <laughs> yes, so it's like jingle bells, bells, jingle, jingle bells, 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 bells. Jing- all the way. Why are we singing Christmas music? It's not Christmas yet. It's not Christmas yet. No, we are far from. it. We are much closer to Halloween than we are closer yeah, to Christmas are. at all. And and why are we here? We are here because, well, there was a little Christmas Halloween-esque movie that was released quite recently called uh, Terrifier 3. Three. And I, Derek, co-host of this podcast. And I, Isaac, co-host of this podcast. For a second, I thought you weren't going to, like, you're just going to Well, you just, like, started a sentence. I'm like, were you going to finish your thing before I just say my name? Well, no, so that it was, like... Your your bit was in parentheses. I see. So I, I see. said my bit. You're saying your bit in yeah, parentheses. Yeah. Then we're coming back. So I, Derek, co host of the podcast. And I, Isaac, co host of the podcast. Uh, watched this movie. We did. Terrifier 3. We, we saw, watched it together. We saw it in theaters. And we saw it. We, 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 we caught another late night showing of this uh, one. There's something about going to see horror in the late hours of the night that is kind of fun. It's incredible. There, you, you know, all the sickos are out to see yeah. this movie. <laughs> well, at least we thought. So, like, we, we thought. we've said this for a while now. Like, I mean, we saw In a Violent Nature late at night yep. and and that was with a decent amount of people in the mm-hmm. theater as well because there is something wonderful that happens at 11 p.m in a horror movie on like a thursday yeah it's exactly how we did like the, the substance yeah. too like that's how, we, yeah, exactly. that's how we see these movies there's a there's a there's an energy to this crowd we're all a little tired all of us are gonna regret this probably a little bit when we have to go to mm. work early in the morning but like we're here we're committed we're it's here. a fun time we're terrifier but so like this whole movie everyone if you know anything about this movie, you know people have been walking yes. out of this movie. If you know anything about the Terrifier franchise, they are known for going like there are no boundaries. They yeah. continue to push those boundaries with every successive movie. And it's like, you know, it is known for going out there over the top. And there have been a lot of, you know, advertisements and like publications for this that are just talking about how many people are walking out of this movie. Yeah. I've seen people reviewing it saying this movie is evil. This movie has the embodiment of evil within it. It is <laughs> It is gross. It 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 goes there. It's too far. Right. It is an evil movie. People are walking out, throwing up. There are movies that literally, I, mostly as a gag, I'm sure, will give you a like a, a mm. throw up bag. Oh yeah, with like the, the the name of the movie on it. You know, and maybe they should have in all showings of this maybe movie. all showings need that. The point the point we're trying to make is we had people walk out. I did not think we were going to. That, yeah, that's what, kind of what I was getting, right? It's like, you'd think people who commit to going to see like a 1030 showing of yeah. a horror movie know what they're getting into. They know into. why they're there. They've they seen the, the other Terrifier movies. Exactly, right? You've been here before. You know what you're getting into by the third movie at yeah. this point. We had seven, eight, 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 people, eight people walk, walk out, out of this movie. And okay, so three of those the varying people, parts of the movie. Very, very wildly different parts <laughs> of the movie. All the different, yeah. I mean, they were all after a grotesque moment. Yes. Right? You could literally be like, okay, so that one was too much for them. Yeah, the there was definitely a scale of like what was bad for people, and and I would argue they think they get worse throughout the movie. So like the yeah. deeper you get into it, the worse you're gonna see. And <laughs> it was funny. Like towards the end of the movie is is one of the worst moments in the entire movie, and that's when like the biggest group of people walked As, out. A group of like four people yeah. at once, all in with their popcorn and their blankets, getting out they of the just, building. And they, one lady was like shielding her face with this from the sickened screen. look on their face. I, I felt kind of sad for him. I was like, Which, you know what? I kind of get it. Wish I was with you. Yeah, a exactly. Bit. It is kind of <laughs> funny though because that is very close to the end of the movie. Like you basically oh, yeah. like that was the worst Shh. it got. It, and it actually <laughs> calmed down at that point. Yeah, exactly. And was just the movie 
and so we actually had a moment where like three kids snuck into the movie and I did read an article that people are doing this like kids are sneaking into these movies why because they're like I mean I get it like if I was 15 again I'd be like ooh I want to sneak into a movie it's it's a tough thing right it is definitely like a kids do not go see this movie kind of thing and then as a kid of course like well now I want to see it because this is forbidden thing that I'm not allowed to go see but those kids so the first big gruesome moment that happens in the movie (laughs) is maybe like 10 minutes in the opening sequence I, mean, yeah, I think they didn't last yeah there was so much chatter coming from their section where yes. they where they had snuck in and we knew they snuck in because they were like looking really really suspicious they uh-huh. sat down they at the front switching seats and then they had the audacity to pull up the ticketing system and find a spot that wasn't sold and they were like oh lie. here's our tickets kind of oh here's our seats props and the- to these kids because that was kind of hilarious like a, I mean, a it felt bit. comical right kinda, it felt yeah. comical and they, they but, might have been stacked on top of each other wearing a trench coat you know like that's the level of like were they not because i thought they were i thought they were too (laughs) but it was really funny because they were like out loud oh here's our seats i think they're over here yes i spent oh yes 79 on these tickets for terrifier three oh man i'm a member of cinemark premium so (laughs) i i get the dollar off for That's the level of like the, how felt the, like that. how much they were trying to sell it, and then immediately they're like, "Nope." But I we am, made a bad decision. I am glad that they were able to recognize we do not belong here. This no. is not the movie no. for us. No, it's really unfortunate. They thought they were actually seeing the Wild Robot. <laughs> they're very different movies, <laughs> but it, it is definitely the movie that from the opening scene is like it sets the stage for what you were going to do from the first kill. You know where this movie yeah. is going to go. They are going to go places, and it's it's another incredibly gory and incredibly like makes yeah. you uncomfortable in your seat to watch kind of movie. So if you haven't been here before, we're gonna spend the next 25 to 30 minutes just telling you about the movie what our thoughts were uh we'll have a section about halfway through where we just gonna scream spoilers and at that point we're gonna all all bars all all holds bars all <laughs> no holds bars all hold all holds bars all those holds bars <laughs> they're out we threw them away. <laughs> we're throwing them out in the trash <laughs> we're gonna go spoiler crazy uh so no fear if you're planning on seeing the movie you just want to hear our thoughts yeah we, so we we'll just spoil anything we'll, 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 we'll glib over most of the details of it not getting into incredible detail of it until our spoiler territory and that's that's when you can take your leave if you wish if you still want to go see it because and i'll tell you right now i i enjoyed myself i had a good time yeah. watching terrify they're 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 fun movies yeah in a f- fucked up way (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean and and that comes with a huge caveat of if you like slashers and you're okay with gore that is so over the top yes like literally the most over the top you could possibly if you listen to our substance review that movie was crazy for fun reasons yes this was movie was crazy for gore yes absolutely it it, it just it it, it goes there much i I said that with the substance and it just like it like pushed what you thought they were going to do it felt safer than it actually ended up being that's a whole different thing this one is not safe this one continues to push those boundaries and go far you're like there's no oh my they're really oh oh, okay wow i mean wow and and we'll get into this but there is a moment in the movie where I was curled up on my seat with my shirt over my nose oh, yeah. up to my uh, my uh, my eyes. Mm-hmm. I wasn't hiding yet, but I was hiding. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Not the composer, <laughs> but like I was hiding. <laughs> so let's talk about Terrifier 3 real quick. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It was written and directed and produced by Damien Leone. And if you've heard anything about the Terrifier series, you've heard about Damien Leone because he started back with some short films of Terrifier, which featured the titular character Art, Art the Clown. I uh, showed you a couple of them. We watched The Ninth Circle yep. and we watched Terrifier. Do short, tort, short, 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 short films. Short, 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 short When did these come out? Wasn't I think it like 2006 or something yeah. like that? I think it is really neat to see like this dude, Damien Leone, coming up with this character of art from all the way back then in 2006. Yeah. That's almost 20 years at this point. It is. Like, what, like, yeah, 18, it's 18, at this, 18 years. 18 years ago. And to see him go from like Terrifier 1 to then the bigger budget Terrifier 2. Now, this movie is like almost number one in the country right now as far as like sales go. It like, is. And that's insane for a horror horror movie not an independent independent because he horror film uh, to mention about Damien Leone he denied offers from I don't know exactly what networks or 
no. like publications or whatever that wanted to, to to do this movie, they were going to tone it back. Yeah. And he's like, no, I know you're gonna come in here with like you with you know your um your say on how these movies should be. Play it safe. What's gonna sell tickets? All yeah. that stuff. He's like, absolutely not. That's no. not the movie I want to make. Absolutely, and, and I respect that. props to that. And absolutely. he's got the money to do it. So Terrifier totally. one and the Terr- fan base too that will support it because Terrifier yeah. two was like crowdfunded, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it was. Terrifier one had a measly little budget of thirty five thousand dollars, which I think all of that was spent on gore totally and terrifier one is fine like it, it's a movie that's like fun yes you know it's it's fun to watch with your friends and be shocked for a little bit it also introduces art the clown who's a fantastic yes. villain sincerely o- the only reason to watch like, like not the only reason to watch but the the, the the best thing about terrifier one is arts the clown it is david howard thornton playing art the clown it yeah. gives an incredible performance as this silent killer he's like a mime of a clown right and he's yeah. an enjoyable killer and I, I i kind of enjoy that because we have not, it's been a while since we've had a new iconic serial slash Slasher villain Dude. character, and he's here. And Art the Clown is here, and he is here to stay. He's he up there with Michael Myers. Continues Fred to make himself a staple. Like he belongs Jason up Voorhees. there with all, all of those iconic yeah. villains, right? Which is so cool and so fun to have something like that. However, uh, Terrifier one, not much to it. It's no. literally Art terrorizing a couple of people and doing some really fucked up things to them. <laughs> there's there's that one kill that really divided audiences that saw it. Hmm. Did you get that? <laughs> yeah, Derek. Did you like really that? Really divided audiences <laughs> who saw it. it. And if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, all right. So then six years later, myriad of production problems later, a Kickstarter campaign or a crowdfunding campaign, uh, Damien Leone makes Terrifier, Terrifier 2, two, two. With a budget of two hundred fifty thousand dollars, so you know they we're they, getting up there. They they, they cranked it up. This they movie made fifteen point seven million though, wow. so it shot up. There. Yeah, way up there. People were like, "Oh wait, this is fun." And and we've talked in great length. And this is, we're not talking about Terrifier two. This is a very short part. Yeah, yeah. But to mention, I mean, that movie cranked up the lore. That movie cranked up the gore. Everything cr- cranked more up the gore cranked up the lore. Four made me feel sore. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> but Terrifier 2, like I said, Terrifier 1 did not necessarily thrill me. I solely no. watched it because people were talking about art. I think I watched it before Terrifier 2 had come out, and that was the reason yeah. I was watching it. And so we come into Terrifier 2. I remember leaving that theater being like, wow. They Wildly really like, different. I did, it really ups the ante for like what story can be told in a serial killer slasher movie. Yeah. Loved the characters that they introduced. There was fun lore behind them. Things started getting really supernatural, almost fantasy in the yeah. way that they were told. And it was like, it was like kind of 80s cheesiness ridiculousness at sometimes but i love that shit oh so yeah like, it like it really rocked my socks like that was one of my best movie re- horror releases of that year yeah it was phenomenal like, hands down i mean i st- i just rewatched it and i was like wow this movie yeah it still holds up still gory it's still a lot still but very like much but like it it does have so much lore that mm-hmm. is introduced and that's why we were so excited going into terrifier 3 yes. because we we're like oh they're it left off so much. Oh yeah, absolutely. It just like, teased if, if, us. if they're going in this upward tick, like let's see where they keep going. You know, let's climb with this. You know, and I just want to say here, right at the top, like something that was obviously always will be impressive about these movies, and also you know disgusting about them is the crazy, outrageous gore. But there's also more things to it, like like David Howard Thornton as Art the Cloud. He is so good. He's so incredible at so this. somehow. Good. Perfectly toes this line where he is a like sadistic monster of a character that does some horrible things as far as yeah. kills to people, but then he's also kind of hilarious and lovable the way he treats these situations. Like he he adds this levity to the scene at the same time with his hilarious antics and just like the the mannerisms of him. He's such a great character actor. Everything the way he, he uses does. his body, everything he does is so intentional. Yes, and it's so funny. It's great. Like. There's so many moments where he just like does something that like it's almost like he deadpan looks at the ca- the camera and's like, "Hey, laugh at me." Yeah, exactly. Like it feels like that, but like in a good way. And you I feel know like what I mean? It's very necessary for how far these movies go, how messed up they yeah. are. If you did not have a kind of funny, lovable, in a sense, like main yeah. villain guy, it would just make you feel pretty bad after watching it yeah absolutely you watch michael myers do those kinds of things and that guy's silent staring at the camera you know makes you feel really gross you're like oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't feel good after that so terrifier 3 had a budget of two million dollars this time he used some of the cash that he got from terrifier 2 just apparently he also bought a house i was watching an interview with him and he was just like yeah i bought a house haven't stayed in it yet because i've been so busy that's crazy but, uh, yeah it was crazy like i was in this in this interview he was talking about how he had basically had one year to write this movie and and then produce it and make it like Whoa. they did it in more than a year. But it was like it was that short of a time that 
it was it was a very short period of time for yeah, production. Pretty quick turnaround then, yeah. For, especially for what they did. And and part of the reason they were able to do that is in Terrifier One and Two and the short films, Damien Leone and like one other person were doing the special effects. In this movie, they were able to hire on some people. Good, get a team of people and going do in the here. practical effects, mm-hmm. which is a, why I think all of the practical effects work oh yeah and why there's so many of them yes like these movies need to be praised for that like absolutely the gore and the effects it is whew, there's it's a couple impressive. in particular yeah there are like, some where you're like how did how did they pull this no, off they really this killed is, that guy <laughs> yeah no that guy's really dead yeah that guy died <laughs> uh but it currently on this day of the year of our art the clown 10 20 2024 uh october 20th 10 20 10 20 uh this movie has currently grossed 35 million dollars in the theater it has passed joker folly of dumb and it has passed uh the wild robot in theaters clown as well. v clown <laughs> joker versus art the clown oh my goodness not even a contest at that point. terrifier 4 is actually going to be musical they, oh they absolutely. announced that could you have that well, okay, I would be into that. Though. I would also be into that because Art the Clown doesn't make any noises. No, but I think it'd be really funny if like he opened his mouth and it was just like singing like 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 a radio almost. Yeah. Like he would sing, uh, uh, he would mouth along two songs. He like would not that be one anti Donna bit where the guy's the jukebox. And yeah, just exactly, exactly. <laughs> what if he like opened his mouth and it was like Susan Boyle or Josh Groban? Okay, yeah. So one person is voice. So it's like you voice, raise me up. <laughs> voice of Art the Clown, Josh Groban. <laughs> <laughs> but then Josh Groban's going to get a cameo and he's going to die. That would be awesome. That'd be kind of funny. He would be into that, too. I know oh. he would. He just played Sweeney Todd, dude. He's ready. That's that's for sure. <laughs> he's ready. All right. That's enough information about Terrifier 2. But Let's s- keep talking about our so opinions. Terrifier 3, they started us out with like a fun teaser when they announced that this movie was happening at all. This time, it's art. It's gory. It's kills. It's Christmas. It has been no. I mean, like the 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 series of shorts, the All Hallows Eve that art really like originates from, right? Yeah. It's all Halloween based, right? Yeah. All of the movies have taken place on Halloween night. Yeah. Now we're doing it on Christmas. Yeah. And it's kind of it's an interesting take. I love it. I think it's really fun, and especially since they didn't release it around Christmas, they released it yeah. now in October around Halloween, which I think is a really fun idea. But yeah, I'm like that's. That's not something that happens all the time, no. you know? You, you take a very Halloween-based killer character, put him in a new setting, put him in the, into, the, into the holidays, and they definitely had some fun with it, huh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there are some really fun themed kills. That's something we talk about on our podcast Oh, yeah, a lot, for is, like, sure. A good themed kill. And there are a lot of really good, like, Christmas-style And Art is moments. such a funny character. Derek specifically loves the, the interaction when Art oh, sees a Santa Claus for the first time. <laughs> Obviously, like you know, That's a Santa so Santa impersonator kind of character, right? But he the the moment when he sees him through like a window, the childlike wonder in Dude, his eyes is it, hilarious. It's a testament to David Howard Thornton more than anything. He is wonderful. He commanded that screen, and and the fact he does it without any words, it's like every emotion in his face is just so funny. It's so, and I really, really, really think that other than the out of the out of control gore mm-hmm. being something that's alluring people. I really think that the charm of art is why this franchise Abs- succeeds. That is a huge reason why this works at all. It's just like I mentioned, right? Like you yeah. need a character like that to lighten these situations and make it so you can stomach getting through the entire yeah. movie. And he just does such a great job with it. Like it just it can't be done without no. him. The way that he performs this kind of stuff. So it's definitely like testament to you, David Howard Thornton, yeah, and dude. your performance as this character. You can tell if he for loves some it. Some reason you're watching this. We will bring you on our podcast, please, for one Twinkie, please, God, and <laughs> anything I, you want. I'll give you two <laughs> Twinkies. <laughs> oh man, the funny thing. Be me saying that is there's a whole podcast plot line in Terrifier 3. Yeah, yeah. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> That's so essentially what you need to know about the characters in this, there are returning characters from Terrifier 2. The main final girl of that movie, her name is Sienna Shaw in the movie played by Lauren Lavera, who Incredible. by the way is a badass. She's so good. Absolutely wonderful. So actress. good. She isn't she like deserves her name up with like iconic screen yeah. queen final girls for sure. We're talking a lot about David Howard Thornton, but she deserves just as much Yes, the two of them really, I mean, like, she came in in Terrifier 2. She wasn't in Terrifier 1, but her introduction of that character and her arc through that and then continuing on in this one, like, she is a phenomenal actress. She does a really good job and is what makes this movie pretty good, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so what happens is there's the whole events of the first movie. Art basically terrorizes her, her friends, her family. They end up making it out of that situation, right? Now she's in this movie, um, and she, I forget where I was going with this plot. The podcast. The podcast bit. Thank you. So she, um, 
she is now trying to struggle in a life after the events of this, and people are trying to glorify this kind of thing, talk about it. And yeah. this is a huge problem in our world, right? You know how yeah. many true crime podcasts do we have oh, of yeah. people who don't want their story told? And so, yeah, there's a girl in the in the in the movie that is a character. It's just like she has a true crime murder podcast with her friend, and they, she wants to talk to Sienna, that character, about the events of Art yeah. the Clown and all that kind of stuff. And as soon as there was somebody who had a podcast, Derek <laughs> and I were just like, ah, uh, no, it's. Uh, Oh man! Oh, uh, we're awful. <laughs> we are uh. the people. <laughs> we're talking about movie. <laughs> yeah, so like obviously we're different, but like we're kooky. <laughs> we're coo- we're different because we're silly about it. <laughs> no, we're different because we keep going. <laughs> But um, so this movie, it 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 was a little more grounded than Terrifier Two yeah, was, was. I would say. I feel like Terrifier good Two way to put it. really impressed me in the way that it kind of went, like that cheesiness of like '80s kind of outlandish fantasy type style lore and weird supernatural stuff. And this one took a couple steps backwards from that. I feel it like did. it was not as much of that stuff. That stuff was still a little bit present throughout it, you know. But it definitely, I kind of felt myself missing that. In oh, this me too. One. I, you put it in a really really good way. You felt like this was almost a Christmas special. Yeah. Yes. Rather than a full movie. It really kind of feels that way. And like, again, I think maybe that's a testament to the fact that it was it was it was set in Christmas, which feels very different than the other ones. But it feels like there's Terrifier 1, there's Terrifier 2. This feels like it's a Christmas special. There's something that did not feel as full and fleshed out, yeah. especially since 2 peaked so high for it me. I, I adored that movie. And the story, again, I feel like it kind of took a couple steps backwards from, from where we were at in Terrifier 2. No, I completely agree. It, it did... It left me wanting, which is, I guess, good. Yes. But at the same time, it left me wanting in the wrong ways. Because I was still left wanting the things I was left wanting from Terrifier 2. Yes. Terrifier like, 2 sets it up like you're going to get some crazy yeah. stuff. Like, if it, it ends in such a crazy way where you're like, oh, I can't wait to see what we get in the next yeah. one. Like, let's let's see these things to, to their end. And you don't really get a lot of those in no. Terrifier 3. It also, like, there are certain things in Terrifier 3 that added more questions, but not the kind of questions I wanted. Yeah, exactly. And, and I didn't feel enough satisfaction from the stuff from 2 to feel ready to move on to new things. Absolutely. But yeah, there, there are definitely things I missed from Terrifier 2 that were that were just not there in Terrifier 3. I feel like Terrifier 3 is a good mix of the two. Yeah. I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed watching the movie. I thought it was a good time. But then I also felt like it kind of had the same problem that Terrifier 1 had, where like there wasn't much to this story. It's mostly just people in cir- circumstances where art can can come and terrorize them in some way, right? Yeah, and of course, there are still like the returning characters, like Sienna, her her character, her brother is there with her as well, who was kind of a background character. He in this was one, barely in this movie, which was kind of sad because yeah. again, I liked him. I liked the relationship that Played the two of Elliot them had. Fulham. Yeah, so like I think he does a good job, and it was kind of sad that he kind of took a backseat in this movie. Yeah, he did. You know who else took a backseat for a duration of this movie? The character of Victoria. Yes. Is horribly massacred not, in this face. I guess it's not a spoiler that she's here. She's in this one, yeah. yeah she, she's a recurring she's on the returning character. Oh, that's true. Mm-hmm. She's a returning character from the first movie. She was actually our final girl from the first movie. Yeah, yeah. And then she kind of goes a little crazy and ends up coming back in this movie. And she's in the end of Yeah, she Terrifier comes in like the well. very end of Terrifier 2 and just like, oh, wow, that's what happened to this character. And then she comes back basically as Art's kind of sidekick for a little bit. And then not. But I, yeah, I, I felt like that was really underutilized. Like, I enjoyed her on screen. Yes. She was awful and terrible. Yes. And I kind of wanted more of that. I, I'm really torn because I liked the stuff that Art was doing. Uh-huh. But at the same time, I was like, well, where's Vicky? Exactly, right? Like, it's, it's just weird for them to do things like that without her. You know, it's like, where is she when Art's off doing his own kind of stuff? You know, it's like, I, I just... I, the fact that you you've you've solidified them as this duo doing these things together, it's kind of fun to have the both of them. And then she just kind of goes away. Yeah, she just and then she away. comes back later. And it's like, okay, good. I'm glad you're still here. But like, where did you go? You know. Yeah. But they did that in Terrifier too, as well, where they gave him like a buddy, basically. Yeah. And it was this little. They call her like the pale girl or something pale like girl, that. Yeah. This this just this young child who like has art kind of makeup. She's got this really fun design. Where she has this one like she's got these two she's pigtails. Great. One of them is sticking like straight up, and her head is like tilted to the side. Sure, you've she seen was, pictures of her. She was she was a very good addition in Terrifier 2. I liked the fact that she existed there, and I was I kind of missed her a little bit. I thought she was a really fun, too. kooky I character. I actually thought she was going to be in the movie. I like, wanted no joke. her in the movie, for I sure. I definitely thought she was going to be here. But so, it, is, it was kind of sad that I, I, I missed that. I liked the, the dynamic between the two of them was really funny. So without going into any further spoilers, I think it's time. Let's, uh, let's tell people if they should see this movie or not. I So, okay. I do think you should see this movie if you're a fan of gore. Yes. And if you're a fan of slashers. Yes. But I really, really think you should see it in theaters with people 
if you can. It always, I mean, like, I'll say that for any movie, right? Like, that always ups, ups the ante for a movie. It is always yeah. more enjoyable when you go and see it with people. You're right. But, like, this but one especially in particular, this one. like, there was something about, like, the three of us sitting there, and every time something would happen, oh, yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, 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 gosh. Curling towards each other. Yeah, like, oh, like, oh somebody help me. Get me out of this situation. <laughs> it just, it really added to the experience. So I think you should go see it. I, I do recommend it. Yes. As a movie, as a slasher. Yeah. As a holiday slasher. As a holiday slasher, <laughs> which I didn't know we needed more of. But yeah, I'm on the same boat. Like, I, I definitely, I would recommend going to see it. Like, I think, like, my vision of it is a little tainted because I loved Terrifier 2 so much. And, like, for me, did not live up to Terrifier 2. I do think it is still enjoyable. Yeah, if you. you're the type of person who enjoys outlandish kills, really out there gore, you know, the kind of stuff that, like, gives you, like, makes it hard to sleep at night, you know. Yeah. Art. As as a performer, David Howard Thornton is wonderful in this movie, and then Lauren Levera does a very good job so in that good. one as well. To that note, I really like she. They went some interesting places with her character in this one, yeah. but she delivers a great performance. Yeah, well, I don't know how I feel about the direction her character is going. Yeah, I guess yeah. we'll just see how it flushes out in the next one. No, if it but does. so so I I would recommend going to see it, especially if you've seen Terrifier One, Terrifier Two. You got to finish out this thing here. There are going to be more. David Leone has come out and said confirmed at least Terrifier Four. He yeah. has said maybe there will be. Two more. He's like, we're just gonna see. He's yeah. like, I, I, I trust that he is like, I will under, I will know when this has seen its end, yeah. right? Well, he has specifically said like, he definitely wants more situations for art to be in. Yeah, like he has them written out. He has, but to end it, he has the entire plot line. Yeah, done. he says he says he promises he, he knows it's gonna be one gonna big end. bloody whatever it, it needs to be, one big final send off for Art the yeah. Clown. But I really feel like this is gonna be a Halloween and a Jason situation oh, where totally. it's like. He's just going to keep going. Yeah. We're going to have Terrifier 12 Netflix edition. That's yeah. Like PG so we'll and- see where he goes. And I would have a lot of respect for him if he's like, we have seen it to its conclusive end here. That's that's just where we're going to live. If we want to have like Art the Clown showing up and other things, that'd be pretty fun. But I think so- we're going to get a Rob Zombie remake. Oh, my God. How could it get worse? How could it get know. more gritty? Rob Zombie will figure it out. <laughs> Rob Zombie will find a way to just <laughs> cover that man in grime and make it make you feel gross. Spoilers. Oh. Jeez, gosh, I did. Scare you. We're plopped. We're plopped down in the spoiler territory. Oh, look at that peak! Welcome into the spoiler room. <laughs> I don't really know how f- deep I want to go with spoilers. It's in this tough movie. because it's like it's a lot to go into. Let's start right out the bat here with a thing that is a pretty controversial topic in this movie. The first kill in the movie is a child. Yeah, that is they 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 start out the gates and that is like here is the boundary we have now pushed over for this movie. We're gonna go that far. It. It's kind of crazy. I I don't know. I don't like that. I don't it's, like children dying. No, it's it's <laughs> tough because I don't want to glorify that in any regard. No, right? of course not. But it's also a thing that has been happening for a minute. You know, like nobody raised an eyebrow when like when Pennywise, another clown, is murdering children. You I guess know? that's a good point. It's a thing that's been and happening. he also does do it in. Almost every movie. It's a gr- and exactly in a, in a gruesome fashion. It's like it's it's been a thing, right? I like, do think it's important to establish that evil can happen to anyone. Yes, right. And I do think that that's where they're going. With Absolutely, this, right? they have this embodiment of evil. He's just killing whoever. Yes, he exactly. doesn't hold back. And there's there's been can I get on, can I get on the the whole like about the embodiment of evil and get this up thing? There. there was someone I wish I'm so sorry I forgot who did it. There's this dude who's like pretty popular on TikTok. He does like this the format of his videos like it's him in front of like pictures behind him and he's talking about them. He's like very educated and informative about some kind of stuff. I cannot remember the name of this guy. I saw it very quick, but he went in lengths about how there were people going on and on about how like this is like what is wrong with people going to see these kinds of movies, right? Going to see these incredibly depraved, incredibly gory. Like you have to be a really messed up person like this and he brought up a really good point where he was talking in length about how like it there is some it's 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 escapism in a way right it is escaping into this world where it would be a lot easier if evil looked like art the clown if it looked like this scary demonic looking blood soaked killer in 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 our world it does not look that way right like we live in a in a a scary world where there are scary people who look like normal people they act like normal people they seem like a pillar in their society and then you find out you know there are these horrible things that they've been doing behind the scenes that evil exists in our world right so there is something to be said about the escapism of like these these horror characters right not just art the clown any of them michael myers you know freddy krueger all of them and there is something to be said for the fact that this has been happening for years yeah. right like people have been enjoying these movies this is not a new thing for so long exactly this movie just happens to be the most gruesome of them. yes it really it really pushed and also like the most mainstream of them too because like i know movies that have done some worse things than terrifier oh, right yeah. there are definitely the movies that push it further but they're not quite as much in the public eye right now right you know and another thing i was i was thinking about 
uh, that makes this movie a little bit more palatable, at yeah. least for me, is the lack of like sexual violence. Yeah, I there, do. I appreciate. There that. is like there's something about like older horror films that are like, oh, we're coming here, we're gonna watch a horror movie. This woman's gonna be naked. Yeah. She's gonna die. Right. Th- there is like one shower scene in this movie, but it there it's is no like sexual. sexual nudity in it. Yeah. Like, well, okay. Well, well except for that guy's balls in a, in a sense. get <laughs> chopped out of the chainsaw. Yeah, there is a sense. There are a lot more, I don't know if we need to get too heavy into this stuff, there are a lot more male murders in this movie. Well, it's, and, and I, <laughs> I've heard a yes. lot of sources have mentioned this now. Even yes. Damien Leone himself has said that he was getting called misogynist. Yes. Like, and people I, were really up in arms about that. And like, I can, I get it. I can understand the argument a lot of people were making because a well, lot yeah. of the really brutal kills in Terrifier 1 and 2 are all happening to women, right? And then he went and he remade <laughs> one of the most like, Iconic kills yes. where he saws a woman in half, saws but he, a man in he half. He sawed a man in half with a chainsaw, Ugh, and it's it's tough. Okay, everyone's talking about that like that was the worst kill in the movie, and let me let me tell no. you, it was bad. It was it was bad. really really bad. It was, but but I don't even want to talk about it. But there there's was, a scene there with is the rats. a worst kill that involves rats and a glass tube. That's all you need. To That's say. all you. It's need. Literally all you need. This to say. this is the kill that I don't know if we've we've mentioned this. Um, no, we haven't yet. David Howard Thornton, the character that plays Art, who has done all of these horrible kills, that is the one that he's like that was almost too much for me almost that was, uh, I, I think so, might have, he, almost he almost threw up as a result of this this kill <laughs> i almost threw up as a result of that kill yeah that's the one that's the one that i was like up to my shirt in my shirt <laughs> yes this is this is the final one like basically the last big kill before the movie comes and that's to an where end. we lost four people four people all at once and honestly i get it i get it i man. understand it I was a lot them for their bravery of walking out of the theater i mean listen we're at the point where like we can't even talk about it like it no. is it is, just, it is so, definitely I out there. Want to. If you're gonna see the movie, you're gonna see it like that. <laughs> that's yes. how I'm at. You're gonna know what we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, there, there. That is a thing. While I do think, you know, I still think I prefer Terrifier two to Terrifier three. I do still think they're continuing to up the ante in these crazy kills. That right? concerns me. Yes. Where are we gonna go next? I we've talked about this before, we right? Have. Where it's like if we continue on our trend of like, you know, we're gonna continue to desensitize ourselves basically, and that we keep having to push that envelope. Yeah. Push down these boundaries. Well, how far can we possibly go? You know what go? really genuinely concerns it's me? It's scary. Is that, like, I'm not as I'm not worried about like copycats and stuff like that yeah. because it is so outlandish yes. and it is so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think that that's a concern necessarily right, because right. again, these movies have been happening for years. Mm-hmm. What concerns me though is this movie is the number one America- movie in America. Yes. We're not going to get copycat killers. We're going to get copycat filmmakers. Oh, absolutely. We're going to start getting a lot more of these movies now. Uh, it's And bigger studios are going to be like, wait, you mean people do want to see that? Yeah, exactly. So they're going to see this and they're going to try to get their We're, hand on the pot now, right? Hold on. People do want to see someone get cut in half with a chainsaw? Oh, people are going oh. to see this. You're making how many millions what? of dollars? People want to get see Santa Claus get frozen to death? <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> Let's let's put that in a movie. He's still God. There, there. I I do love the inventive kills of art. Sometimes he does one where he takes liquid nitrogen yes. and freezes a person and just like smashes the frozen pieces of him, and it's oh, it's brutal. And like we've seen that in movies before. Yeah, like with the whole liquid nitrogen thing. It's nice to see it have a comeback. I saw that as a review. <laughs> like, so it was just like, <laughs> oh, it's the return of liquid nitrogen. Okay. I have a I have a segue after yes. my thought. Okay, don't let me forget. I'm gonna uh, segue. <laughs> thank you. No. When I saw the liquid nitrogen thing, I was like, okay, so they're just going to, like, Mr. Freeze shatter into a bunch of different cubes. Sure, sure. Right. No, man. They literally went, like, as realistic as physically possible. I remember I didn't thinking need to that. know. I no. didn't need to know what happened when you had liquid nitrogen. But the effects were so great that it's like, I feel like that's realistically what would happen yes. if someone was frozen with liquid nitrogen and you smashed that frozen part of their body. Like, it looked really I, believable. I did not want to know. I felt like no. I had a science lesson that I was not asking for. No, exactly. <laughs> I didn't I didn't want to know I that. Didn't, it's like... Am I better for knowing it? No. Am I, I worse? No. Slightly. I but I know that no I didn't information. Know. <laughs> okay, my segue. I saw a review on Letterboxd mm-hmm. uh, that said that Art the Clown is basically Mr. Bean. And that was the greatest oh, thing I've ever heard in my, my life. Oh, my God. Is it's it wrong? Horror, it's horror, Mr. Bean. It's so right, right? 
Like he's Mr. Mean. <laughs> Mr. Mean. Oh, he's the mean one? Uh, well, the, yeah, I guess that tracks. See, that everyone. comes around in many ways because David Howard Thornton played the Grinch in the mean uh, one. That's also a Christmas one. So you know, it's good. all it's all coming around, baby. <laughs> Man, what else do we even talk about? It's tough to, when, oh, you, when you just don't want to get crazy into the kills, right? What what we can talk about is Jonathan, the, the little brother. He Where was, was he? barely in this movie. When he was there, he was asleep. And then when he was there, he was not there. No. <laughs> so they... It's obvious that things were cut from this film, yes. right? Like, Dave, uh, Damien Leone has said that there's about 20 minutes of unseen footage, mm-hmm. uh, uh, probably a lot more. But I'm really curious to see if that shows what happens to, to Jonathan. Because at the end of the movie, you see a rotting skull, and then they put glasses on it, and it implies that it's him. Yes. But Which, we didn't you know, see a body. We didn't see a body. We didn't see the kill scene. So I'm hoping... That they give him more than this because I was a little bummed out. Like this dude returned from the sequel; he was an important character in it. Yeah, and you basically gave him nothing to do in this movie, and then you just kill him without even Off-screen. showing anything. There's no way. There's no. He has in, to be. So in that moment when she goes down the stairs towards the end of the movie, and you see the dad's corpse, uh-huh. like I genuinely thought she was in a dream sequence. Yes, it I was, thought she it was, was a little gonna wake up. Yeah, because it was so outlandish. It was crazy, so right? like jump cut. I thought I fell asleep and woke up and missed 20 minutes of the movie. Well, right, because there's even a scene where like there's a bit of lore where like Sienna is basically some embodiment of some kind of like Valkyrie angel warrior. Yeah, pretty dope. Which they introduced in the sequel. I'm like, that kicks ass. That's it's super so cool. cool. She's basically the only person that can stand a chance against Art the Clown, right? The only yeah. person who can stand like mano a mano, which she does in in, in Terrifier 2, right? Yep. And so it is It is given to us that there is like some special magic sword that she has that she uses in Terrifier 2, which again, love that shit. That was yeah, super fun. So cool. Very fantasy, loved all of that. And so in Terrifier 3, they're like, oh, we got to get the sword back. Oh, it's back at the Terrifier where I left it at the end of Terrifier 2. It's a roller coaster. And it's a, it's, it's a ride, which is really fun, like naming the movie. I, I, I thought it was a fun, yeah, fun was thing. Cool. But then they're like, we need to go get the sword. The next scene is her walking into the house. The sword is wrapped up in a present box. Like, what? what? Show us a little bit about like, you going back to get it. Did, did something yeah. happen there? Like, it was just weird that it jump cut like that. You it know? did. And, like, her hands were dirty. Like, she was just there. And it felt like that was just, I like, feel like something, telling us. I'm sure it could have been as boring as, like, she goes to the ride, digs it up, picks it up, and leaves. So, like, I, don't, I feel like something could have happened no. there that would have been more fun to watch. The whole movie, I was like, why didn't you get this earlier? Yeah. Like, I would have kept that with me all the time. Right. Exactly. Like, I, especially if she's, like, sitting here. Because what I dislike about what they did with her character in this one, they basically have her going in and out of mental institutes because of her, like, you know, she's really traumatized after the really horrible events of Terrifier 2, which makes sense. Yeah. Right? That's completely justified for her to feel like these... But, like, it's weird that, like, the world is making her feel like a crazy person. They saw the body of Art the Clown there. Clearly, people really died. I don't understand why she's made out to be a crazy person. Did they see the body there? I mean, a cop saw it in Terrifier 3, right? But then he died. And then he dies, yeah. But I so guess, like, I guess that's fair. So really, the evidence was gone. I don't know why I'm trying to justify it. I also didn't like this plot line. No, he's I, with, you're with me, right? I, I'm absolutely with you. Like, I think that it was just kind of thrown in as a way to give conflict to Sienna's character. It's just kind of But we have conflict with her character. Ex- like, that conflict exists already. And she is such a strong, badass character to basically make her, like... Like hide within herself, being like I'm a crazy person. Everyone yeah. thinks I'm crazy. Like, but I know this thing is happening. I just I didn't like we, that as much. We could have had all. Of, I did like her, like how she's basically a little schizophrenic now. Yes, I did like that. I that liked, was really cool in like the one scene we actually got. Yeah, it. she's sitting at the dinner table, and one of her dead friends from the second movie is sitting there, like yelling at her. And it's scary. I it's, I felt uncomfortable. That was the scariest part of the movie. Yes, for me. really, that one affected me. That she's was like yelling at her, banging on the table. Oh, you know, awful, and everyone's just like n- can't see it because she right. really blames herself for the fact that all of her friends and family died and i wanted more of that i wanted yes. more of like i want more of the sienna that was yelling at the podcaster about yes. about her trauma absolutely like that her performance was so good very good so convincing and that's what i say right i don't like the way they were writing her character at the moment but i do love the fact that despite that she still gives a yeah. kick-ass performance and and i think i would have i would have enjoyed all of her stuff better had the people around her just been more supportive yes like honestly, I don't. I I don't know. It just didn't feel right to me. None of them. It mean, also didn't feel right that her and Jonathan weren't 
together. Yeah. And like you, they Jonathan have to fight kind of for steps, their relationship. Yeah, he kind of steps away from her. He's like, you know, I'm trying to move on with my life and you're still hung up on this. Like, bro, she's traumatized. Well, and also you in, should be too. In Terrifier 2, he was the one that was all gung-ho. He yes. was the one making these decisions. He, the, he is obviously a part of it. His character was also written a very different direction, right? Like it's in the, non-existent and it, and it makes sense, you know, because like there's even a scene where like Sienna's trying to like buy something for him for Christmas and she's asking her like uh, ne- cousin or something like that. Yeah. She's trying to ask her, you know, oh, would he like this black Jack and she's like, no, he doesn't really wear black anymore. He just wears like normal clothes. It's he's like just like a normal guy. It's now. like he's like completely stripped away of his identity from yeah. the second one it, as, as a way of like escaping from his trauma of it. I guess I don't know. Right. You yeah. know what also really struck me as weird. So she Sienna goes to stay with her aunt, right? Her aunt yeah. and her uncle. That means it would be her deceased mother's sister. That sister does not seem phased at all about the fact that She's her cool. sister is dead. She's fine. Like there's a scene. All she does is hate Sienna. Yeah, there's a scene where like the two of them are talking over the dinner table, you know, just trying to, you know, just just try to chat after these weird events have happened. And like Sienna is talking about like I really miss mom, you know, she's terrible. And she's like, yeah, I feel for you, kid. And it's like, don't you also miss your sister? Like, do you, yeah, am, am I missing something? Is there not a connection here between no. you and that character? <laughs> there's also a really really throwaway character of a niece that is just getting. She was obnoxious. She's the worst. I'm so sorry. That kid actor was. Not not was not doing it for me <laughs> that's all we need to say about her yeah really though <laughs> i don't even know what else to say at this point it 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 was an enjoyable experience right i i do again i re- i do recommend it as like a a fun slasher film yeah exactly it's definitely 2024 mm-hmm. probably it, it is probably the most gory movie i've ever seen yes like, honestly it does concern me how far they're gonna keep going where will we go if we get a fourth and maybe a fifth terrifier movie you know if we're pushing certain boundaries what else are we because at this do? point we're just gonna keep getting more and more numb to it like yeah. he can't keep doing more of the same it's like an inevitable course right it's right it's, it's scary, snowball right it, uh, i mean it's that's in horror in general right like we've talked we discussed that on the podcast as well right like where where do we stop are we just gonna keep going with and this I kind of thing i don't know if we ever will and i think i think it will just kind of keep going mm-hmm. you know and <laughs> I don't know where <laughs> I don't know where to go from there. But yeah, so for me, I'm sitting at a solid like I think I gave it like a three three point five you know decapitated heads on the top of a Christmas tree. Yeah, I give it three point five. Hey, that was I get it. Uh-huh, yeah, see, he gets uh, it. It's a frozen call. Santas. Frozen Santa. <laughs> I loved Frozen Santa. Well, no, actually, I didn't love Frozen Santa, but I loved the interaction with Art. Yes, and Santa exactly. So Again, much. so like really, really the standouts of this movie, and like you know, looking beyond what everybody wants to talk about in the gore, there are some funny. There's a funny performances from from david howard thornton is that lauren the vera giving a great performance again just like terrifier 2 yeah. she's she, she's a great character i am i'm excited to see where more things go Me unfortunately too. wish there was more given to us so i'm like yeah. i'm left sitting here like okay well they didn't do it then so hopefully in the next one you know they'll give us a little bit more there was one wild sequence where where uh, sienna is having like a dream kind of thing there's some like evil creature oh, yeah gimp looking character who's being held by like a virgin mary statue on a chain yeah. who is like, alive yes and it's like blacksmith putting together like armor for her is what it appears like and that just goes away i where that, that was in the trailer that was in the trailer and i want to know what the hell i want to know more of that tell me more about please that. what's happening there and again, see that's the kind of craziness that they had in terrifier 2 that i wanted more of in terrifier 3 me too, me too. and again it kind of just at the end of the day felt like a, a holiday special not that that's necessarily a bad thing no it just left us wanting a little bit more yeah. you know so yeah, that's us. Uh, if you've seen Terrifier 3, let us know what you thought. Put down in comments below. And uh, if you want to see more, you can follow us. You can follow play- us. I don't normally say this part. This uh, is normally all of Isaac our social medias. Me look up, look up. That was horrible anywhere. You and you'll find it in certain <laughs> places. <laughs> if you're new here, I, thanks for stopping. Yes, by. thank you for as always for checking us out. We'll be doing more of these kinds of things. Yeah. There, it's, it, 2024 has been a great year for horror. Dude, we gotta keep talking about movies. It, it is kind of insane how much there has been. I even like. I thought last year was a good year for horror, but then at the end of the year, we did our top ten list, and I remember feeling like the bottom of my list was like. I even felt like there were some movies. I'm like, well, I guess I'll put that in here. No. But right now, I'm the, struggling. The year is not even over yet. I'm like, oh no, what is not going to make it on my top ten yeah, list? Yeah, man. I'm a little scared for putting that together. I already, I already have my my growing one, and I've already had yes. to remove things. And I'm like, oh, but I love that. I movie. know. I did that just recently. I went through all the movies I've watched this year. I'm like, oh man, I'm I'm gonna struggle. So I need to start right now. Yeah, you do. <laughs> and really solidify where some of these at. And I'm sure some of them will change and stuff. But so there are still more horror movies to come. You know, so so we got some some great ones coming up. Some maybe not so great ones. Mm. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, you know, thank you for joining. 
joining us yeah, here. Thanks. We'll be doing more of this stuff. We'll catch you next time for our regular uh, episode yeah. where we'll be watching. We, we agreed we're watching The Crooked, Crooked Man, Man, right? Yeah. The Hellboy movie, which I'm looking forward to. I don't know. We'll see. I've seen very uh, both end of the spectrum kind of reviews about this movie. Yeah, and I think too. it just depends on how much of a fan you are of it. But uh, thank you for joining us. Thank and you. as always, uh, Garfield, Garfield be, with be with you. Stay, Stay spooky. spooky. Goodbye.